Come on in, everyone. Come on in and take a seat, y'all, because we are here ready to review Ready to Love Reunion Part 2. And as you come on in the door, y'all, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button. Y'all been reminding me. I got to remind you. Y'all reminded me that I got to remind you. <laughs> so here I am. I'm reminding you once again. I'm going to try to get in a better habit of doing it. Don't forget to hit the like button on the way in the door. And if you've been here a couple of times, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe. Um, I'm not going to bite. Go ahead and subscribe and help me um, get my numbers up. But anyway, y'all, we got to talk about this reunion part two. And as my thumbnail said, I'm calling it a secrets and lies. <laughs> secrets and lies because really, y'all, this whole episode, I don't know if they were conspiracies, if they were considered secrets, if they were considered lies. I mean, nowadays, everybody got so many different definitions of words. What's a conspiracy versus what's just a lie? Um, what's, uh, what's a secret versus I just didn't want to tell you? versus what is a lie <laughs> um and what is two timing people because there's a whole lot of two timing going on this season behind the scenes like we said if you were not in tune with all the stuff going on off camera you are definitely going to be lost this season but i know i owe y'all a couple of videos i owe you the video on um breaking down the alonzo video and I owe the video on the interview Little Black Book Kojo did with Alexis. I'm an hour into the Alexis video, one hour in. All I've heard so far is that she's a rebel. <laughs> she's a rebel. That's all I've heard so far because I'm only one hour in and it's a three hour video, y'all. So um, I'm going to watch it later on today and then I'm going to come back tomorrow and do the recap review on Alexis video, which I think is kind of fitting because Alexis didn't come back. So in this reunion part two, Alexis did not come back. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed in that. So I'll hopefully maybe in the interview, Kojo covers her side of the story because right now that is the missing link between the stories we've heard. We've heard a Cole story, a Koshia story. We've heard Laurent's story. We've heard everyone else's story, Will's story but we haven't heard fully Alexis's story. So I don't know if he covers that on his interview or not, but I'm going to be watching and then I'm going to come back tomorrow and do uh, a recap review on the exit interview that uh, she's done with Kojo. And then to make up for that, I didn't go back and fully break down the Alonzo video. I'm going to talk about it here um, because I know a lot of y'all going to be mad at me. A lot of y'all was dropping down the comments telling me what I need to do. First of all, people, this is my YouTube channel. And first of all, you're not going to tell me what I need to apologize for because my mind ain't your mind and your mind ain't my mind. So I'm going to still double down on what I just said about Alonzo. And I'm going to double down it on again in this video because we actually see that some of the things he said on that video were, you know, was the truth. And that is, um, understanding versus agreement like i said this word salad that's out here you know even for me and everything else it can be confusing i get it people can sometimes confuse words that's why for me i like to get agreement on words before i go any further on and i don't mean agreement in, in terms of you got to agree with my definition i mean i just need you to know how i'm using the word it may not be how you use the word but it's how i use the word so when I talk about Alonzo and I talk about what I believe his intent is, okay, versus what his impact was, a lot of people are mistaken that because I understand what he was saying by his intent that I agree with it. It's not the truth. It's not the same thing. I can understand a person and not agree with them, okay? I can understand how a person got to a place but it doesn't mean that I agree with how they handle it when they got hit there. I can understand what their intent was, but I may not agree with their impact. Shoot, we just sitting over here talking about O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson died. Y'all hear the news? O.J. Simpson died. Biggest case. And let me tell you what that was a case about. That was a big case about intent versus impact. Dude, you know what? That was the biggest debate in town around that time. When, when uh, O.J. Simpson went over there and confronted his wife, ex-wife at the house and he also confronted that man was his intent to go over there and actually kill them in the way that he did 
Some of you probably believe he didn't do it. Whoever he took with him. I'm, a, I'm one of the ones that believe he had someone with him. I don't believe he did. It. He was there by himself. And I'm one of the ones that believe that when he went over there, his intent was not to really have that type of mayhem. But I think something went terribly wrong. I do. But I'm not going to sit here going over debating that. But the point I'm trying to make is I can understand what someone's intent was. I'm going over there to scare the lady, but I don't agree with it. I don't agree with you doing it. I don't agree how it went down. I don't agree with nothing else. But in my mind, I can see, I understand what you're saying, but it doesn't mean I agree with you. And that's where I stand with Alonzo. I really want people to know this. Like I told people before, I believe Alonzo is 10 years younger than what he is physically. I think he's something like 34. I think he dates like he is probably in his uh, mid to late 20s. I think he's delayed. But let me tell you this. The partner he was with, uh, Patrice, she's delayed. Patrice is 43, 44, but Patrice doesn't date like she's 43, 44. Patrice dates like she is probably also somewhere back in her 30s. Sometimes I want to put her in her 20s. Okay. So when I see these two together, I see two grown people in their 30s and 40s, yet their behavior, their interaction, their dating style, the impact of what they do looks like something I would see in a 20 or a 30 year old. That's the point I'm trying to get. That is the point that I'm trying to get. And we end up finding out here on this season, I mean, uh, episode two of the reunion, that a lot of what Alonzo was saying on that video ended up being correct. That Patrice was still hanging out with um, Will. William, not Will, but William, she was still hanging out with them. Now we can say, well, that's okay, because guess what they never had? They never had an agreement on what their relationship looked like. Between Patrice and Alonzo, there was never an agreement on what this is. You see, when we had, um, when we had Mika sitting there with Justin, there was an agreement that we're exclusive, now, Alonzo says he thought that they were exclusive, but the agreement was what does exclusivity look like? Maybe me and Justin need to have the conversation because what I consider exclusive exclusivity may not be what you mean. So all these words, all these labels, when you're in a relationship, you better spell them out. You better spell them out because it sounds like what Alonzo said is exclusivity means I'm not sleeping with no one from here, no one else besides you from here on. But that doesn't mean that I don't talk to other women. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. And then you have Patrice who came over and got mad because he was talking to someone else. But yet we find out that Patrice was also talking to William. And she was also talking to Laurent because like we know, she went over there and massaged his feet and cleaned his house. So people can be mad at Alonzo all they want about his impact. And I'm in the party. I'm in the boat with you. But do I believe it's always Alonzo's impact? I don't think so. You know why I don't think it's still his, I'm not impact, his intent is because Alonzo has even created a card game with the very questions that most people find offensive. Alonzo has this obsession with, I believe, um, how he integrates sex into his relationships. And he believes that the way that he has the conversations about sex is the way that everybody else wants to have it. So when he's talking about choked and spanked and he's doing all this, he's believing that everybody else wants to have these types of conversations so much that he believes that he creates a card game about it. He creates a card game. I know a lot of people think, oh, Alonzo is just talking about this stuff because he wants to have a certain type of um, impact on people. Well, now what I'm asking is, do we really believe that Alonzo has created a card game with the very questions a lot of people don't like, found offensive, and then what he's done is he's decided to market it, because he's marketing it, right, so that he could break up people, so he could break up people. No, Alonzo actually believes what he says. Now, it may be convoluted, it may be crazy, I don't agree with it. But he actually believes what he said. He believes that having the conversations the way he wants to have the conversation is good. Is good. He believes it. He's, I don't think he's being malicious. I don't think he's, 
when he gave Patrice the key to his house. I don't think he gave the key to Patrice and said, you know what? I'm going to use one of Laurent's word, conspired. I'm what I'm going to do is I really want to have a real horrible impact on Patrice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her this key to my house. And then what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite this other lady on and I'm going to create this scenario so that I could hurt Patrice. No, no, I really do believe that Alonzo, when he gave Patrice the key to his house, it, in his own 24, 25 year old mind, not the 36 year old body, Alonzo felt that that was a gesture to show Patrice that he could be trusted. That's what I believe. I believe his intent was to show that he could be trusted, but yet it was a horrible way to do it. It was horrible. It was a horrible method. Okay. When, when, when Alonzo is talking about STDs and STD reports and STD tests, what he's saying is, Hey, I wanted Patrice to know that I could be trusted and that I wasn't sleeping with any, I wasn't out here willy nilly sleeping with people and I don't carry any diseases. So what I do is I share my STD report with Patrice or whomever else. And he even told the story how he calls the clinic and he lets the girl on the other end hear what the clinician is saying. That may be creepy for some people. Some people may find that, Ugh, no, I don't like that. But in Alonzo's eyes, this is what he feels he needs to do in order to prove to this person whatever he's trying to prove. Now, that's what I'm saying. Is his intent bad? No, but his methods are horrible and his impact is horrible. So I'm not going to back down for what I'm saying. I still say I don't believe that Alonzo is a seriously malicious person. I believe that he's hard headed. He's stubborn. He doesn't listen. Check this out, y'all. Y'all have gotten on me about how much I take up for Alonzo, how much I give him grace. If y'all scroll any of my um, comments, you will see Alonzo dropping down in my comments, telling me stuff about myself. And what he says at the beginning of every comment is I didn't listen to your video, but all I saw was my picture. And then he says something nasty to me. <laughs> So he doesn't listen to the video, right? Y'all are mad at me for taking up for Alonzo, as you call it, taking up. I don't even think it's called taking up. But you say I take up for him, I give him grace. He's still so stubborn, he didn't even listen to my videos. <laughs> he still puts me in the bucket of his enemy. So I can't win for winning. I can't, I can't even get uh, Alonzo to say thank you. I can't get y'all to get up off my back. This just shows who Alonzo is. He's immature. He's stubborn. He's hard headed. He's not going to learn. He's not going to learn because he don't listen. He does not listen. I agree with all of that. I'm telling you, Alonzo reminds me of, a, of like a young person, a, a, a young minded person in their, in his twenties. I did a whole video on how I think he should stuck in his twenties. I really think he's stuck closer to high school. I, if I'm really, really honest. He doesn't grow because Alonzo doesn't listen. And at the beginning of every sentence, when he comments, he says the same thing to me. I didn't listen to your video. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. But nobody really needs to be dealing with Alonzo. Nobody really needs to be dealing with him. He's not fit for a relationship until he decides that he's going to get some help. And he's going to start listening to some people. Um, because in the end, like I said in my last video, it really doesn't even matter if his intentions are not as nefarious as I know some people think they are. Because in the end, uh, like I said, um, prisons, OJ Simpson, and uh, lots of people, uh, prisons are full of people whose um, intent went afoul, that their intent might have been this, but this was the consequence. And so as I'm going to double down and say, my real focus for Alonzo is on his impact, his impact and his methods. Um, he wants to keep... Everybody wants to stay stuck on what his intent is. And I'm not going to stay stuck there. I've moved past that. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go back and say, um, yeah, I agree with everyone that his intent was to be uh, extra malicious out here. No, I'm not going to do that. So we need to just stick. You and I, we need to stick where we have agreement. Let's stick where we have agreement 
we agree that the impact is horrible and we agree that the methods are horrible but don't try to get me to go back and believe something else let's just concentrate on uh, what we agree with and that is that his methods are horrible and that his impact is horrible and talk about intent and impact another person on this episode too where i feel like it went afoul was with jonathan was so, a lot of you all know from the beginning i was not called i was not one of the ones that really believed that jonathan was this big liar i just didn't believe it and a lot of people said oh you're taking them for all the men you're taking them off for the men i said i don't believe it and once again i think i don't know if a lot of you have figured out or come to some different different thought but they called jonathan a chamber of secrets and the secret always became well what is the secret the secret is that when mika called the uh, mother of his children a baby mama he didn't correct her and therefore that was a lie he lied to mika and said that um didn't he lied to Mika and didn't tell mika that he was married well not really because he said i told other women that i had been married so mika classified him as a liar well just because i don't correct you doesn't mean that i'm a liar just because i don't correct you when you say something doesn't mean that i'm a liar people say things about me all the time in my comments i don't correct them sometimes i just say okay does that make me a liar because i didn't correct you no that means sometimes i don't address foolishness and to me when mika talked about jonathan's ex-wife the mother of his children and she called him a baby and she called that woman a baby mama she said more about herself than she said about jonathan or that woman and to be honest with you i'm not so sure if i'm jonathan i correct her either because sometimes i don't correct ignorance sometimes when people reveal themselves and what their moral standards are and who they are i don't feel the need to correct them sometimes i just let them be them because if i figure out i don't want nothing from you i don't want to be with you i really don't have no conversation with you what is the point of me correcting you why it doesn't help me all it does is help you and if i don't care about giving you more understanding about myself then i don't need to correct you but that does not mean that does not mean i'm a liar we're sitting over here now complaining about will people are mad at will because will keeps defending himself about this money thing everybody keeps calling him broke 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 you broke you sleeping on a pallet but when Will keeps correcting people, when Will keeps telling people, no, I'm not broke, then people say, oh, why are you always talking about your money? <laughs> oh, we want it both ways. We want it both ways. We want, you know, hey, we want everybody to correct. We don't always want people to correct people over and over and over again. But sometimes when they correct them too much, we say, well, why are you harping on it? And why are you trying to, uh, you know, um, I don't know, put other people down? But then when, when Jonathan over here says, well, I'm going to just let Mika be Mika because Mika's over here looking at it from her point of view because she's a baby mom, as we know. She has two children by two different men. People wondering about what's going to go on with Justin and Mika. I'm calling Justin just in time, Justin, because he came just in time for Mika and I'm happy to see them together. I'm happy to see love. I'm happy to see love. I hope they work, y'all. I really hope that Justin and, and uh, Mika work they both seem to be very happy they seem to be in their honeymoon stage um i don't know i don't follow them on ig so i have no idea if now they're even still together because this reunion was filmed back in october uh we learned that from um we learned that from alonzo when he did that confessional he put the date up this reunion was taped back in october so we're all the way in april so that's quite a ways away we want to know if mika and justin are still together any of you sleuths out there, I know a lot of people have a lot of intel. Let me know, are, are, are Justin and Mika still together? Because let me tell you, it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle. I know right now Justin is in love and Mika's in love. And they're bonding over their honeymoon stage. Because what Justin has said is, you know, Mika has a 90% of what I want. And why would I not have this relationship with her? when the 10 percent that i want which is a child um i can't get well i hope it's only 10 percent. i hope it's only 10 percent, and i hope that when you guys start to have your first fights your first disagreements because every couple does i hope he holds on to that i hope he doesn't then say dang now we fussing and fighting and i ain't getting no, and i'm not gonna get no baby 
I hope he don't come to that conclusion. It's all well and good to maybe overlook something you don't have when it's nice and new and fun. But later on, when the relationship starts to get tested, as every relationship does, I hope he holds on to the sentiment that, yeah, I'm being tested right now in this relationship with Mika, but um, it's still enough for me and I don't need, I don't need a baby. I hope he doesn't become resentful because I think Mika's going to hold firm. Mika holds firm a lot. If you look at Mika, she's just like this. She's steady. Even Tommy asked her, or there's any opportunity to have a, another baby. She said, nope, not at all. There's no opportunity. Mika said, I'm not reversing my um, tubal ligation. She's not going to reverse it. I don't even know. I think you can reverse it, but I don't even think if you do reverse it, it's like guaranteed it can happen. And then uh, Will says she's had a BBL, and I know she ain't trying to mess that up because she ain't trying to put another. How much do BBLs cost? How much do BBLs cost, y'all? I know she ain't trying to repay for that again, the mommy package. She's like, I had one. I'm one and done on the BBL. I'm not going to get pregnant unless they do surrogate, but I don't know. Surrogate costs a lot of money. Um, so maybe Justin has saved up a lot of money. Maybe he could teach some summer school. <laughs> Maybe he could do, but I think Mika's, I think with Mika is more than not wanting to birth the children. I don't think Mika wants to raise any more children. I mean, Mika says she had her first child very young when she was, I think she might've been 18 years old when she had her first child. I think it's more than not wanting to have a baby and mess up her body and start all over. I think she just doesn't want any more children. She wants to live a different life. She may want to, you know, travel, go out, you know, her kids are not at the age where Maybe she don't even need a babysitter. I don't know how old her youngest is, but maybe she could go out and leave the kids at home by themselves. The oldest one can babysit the youngest one and she don't even got to pay for a babysitter. Mika trying to live her um, hot girl summer. She trying to get her hot girl summer back. But I just hope that um, that becomes enough for um, Justin. I know a lot of people are worried about if they break up, who's going to be hurt more? Would Mika be hurt more because she's finally letting some of her walls down and then all of a sudden you know Justin says well I do want a child because he's still young he's only in his 30s he got a lot of time to change his mind that he's willing to go through life without a child most men it's not, it's not unnatural for a man to have a, a child when he's mid-40s so you know a John, Justin can run out this relationship with with Mika and then go you know go off and have a baby with another woman shoot so in the end, you know what? And nowadays, you know what? People talk about relationships. Relationships, people say they're for a reason. They're a season for a season and for a lifetime, right? Um, some people don't believe in being married to the same person your whole life. They don't think that it's natural. They don't think that it's the way it was intended. Some people think, hey, why not find partners for certain time periods of your life and do well to each other bond on that comment and then if life should change later on then it's okay if we break up because i could see justin and mika being together for a season i could see it i could see the season that mika's in where she just wants to raise her children to their grown and up out of the house which may be another five or six years um i could see justin maybe one and a half children, but okay with not having them now because he's still young. I think Justin's only in his mid thirties. I could see them having um, a good run or even a lifetime, but I could see a season. I could see them saying, you know what? We're compatible. We have a good time together. We love each other. We, um, we want, you know, we want right now we're in the same place, but I could also see Justin later on, six, seven years down the line saying, you know what? I don't feel complete. I don't feel whole. I do feel like I want a child. I do feel like I want a legacy. I do feel like that. And I could see a scenario where Meek and Justin go their own way. And, 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 and then Justin goes off and finds a woman who does still want to have a child. It could happen. So for the season that they're in, whether it's going to be a season or a lifetime, I'm going to wish them well because happiness is worth it. A lot of times, like Justin said, I'm happy right now. I'm happy right now. Why would I leave this happy place? And sometimes people just need one or two or three or four years of happiness. 
ain't nothing wrong with it. Sometimes we go through so many years of unhappiness, unhappiness, sadness, loneliness, depression, that when we finally get into a zone in which we're happy, to hell with if we got everything we got, want to be happy. To hell with it. Right now, I'm happy. And I'm not going to concentrate on what I'm not getting from Mika. I'm going to concentrate on what I'm getting from Mika. And I'm not going to look too far down the road. I'm just going to sit here and be happy. And for that reason right there, I get this couple. I get Mika and I get Justin. Because right now, here in this moment, they are happy. You can see it on their face. You can see it in their smile. You can see it on their countenance and what they said. And I'm happy that they're in a happy place because a lot of people right now are even just struggling to get into the place that Mika and Justin are, which is a happy place. When people are happy, you know what? I'm going to let them sit there. I'm going to let it sit there and be happy. I'm not going to be the one to come say, well, you better watch out about this later on down the road when maybe down the road it's not as bad as we think it will be. Be happy. And I'm happy for Mika and I'm happy for Justin. I'm looking at my notes of what else was going on. I got this little note here about Chaz. Someone he loves a woman in heels. He gets sauced up over a woman in heels. That's everybody walking down the street, Chaz. I tell you, Chaz don't eliminate no woman for liking him. Now he said his criteria is a woman in heels. First he was on, I like all 11 women. They were like, well, there was only 10 women. And I guess we found out that the 11th woman is this other woman. I don't know. Do we believe the 11th woman? We're going into this secrets lies. What's a secret? What's a lie? Do we believe Chaz this story? The story being that he knew this woman prior to ready to love. Then this woman says to him, she must be in love with him because the way he's saying it, they're now engaged. If it really is a woman, it could be Nola. It could be his dog, Nola. The way that Chaz likes to talk, and like Chaz said, he's poetic, that he's poetic. The love of his life, the date set, could be Nola. It really could be Noah. Nola. He could be ready to breed Nola, talking about that's going to be the wedding. That's going to be the consummation. Not his wedding, but Nola's wedding to maybe somebody else, and he's going to breed Nola. Who knows what Chaz is talking about, because Chaz told us he is poetic, and if you just take him literally on his words you're gonna miss him that's what he's saying i'm poetic he said that this petrified rose that i gave um vanessa was poetry <laughs> he said it was poetry y'all but do we believe him about this engagement you know let me tell you something about this whole thing first of all i would have to believe this about this woman that this woman already was dating Chaz, in love with Chaz. Um, but they obviously, were they in an exclusive relationship and Chaz was on here sucking lips with um, uh, Rashina and talking about he deeply cared for Vanessa? This is what I would have to believe. So if he was in a relationship with this woman and he's two-timing her on the show, one is I have to believe there is a woman who would go along with this. That's unfathomable. I just can't believe it. unfathomable to me that she would go along with this. And then when he comes back with his tail tucked between his legs and say, I was unsuccessful in finding a new love. So I'm going to come back to you. So do you want to get married? She goes, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I still want to marry you. <laughs> if that woman is saying yes to Chaz, I'm going to tell Chaz right now, Chaz, she's after your money. She's after your money. I'm going to warn you. Chaz, I'm going to tell you right now, if you were dating a woman and that woman um, said to you, I'm okay with why we are dating or in a relationship or I'm in love with you, that you can go on another show, a dating show, look for a whole new possible wife, come back to me and say that oh, I didn't find a new wife. <laughs> and you come back with your tails tucked between your legs because you got rejected by Vanessa and you got end up getting re uh, rejected from Patrice, which I mean, no big deal over the rejections, but you did get rejected. And now you come back to me and you and you propose to me, and I say yes. Warning, Chaz, she's after your money. <laughs> she's after your money because what she's saying is, I don't care about none of that. All I still care about are the things I cared about in the beginning, and none of that's going to change. Chaz, she's after your money, and she probably wants the soft life. <laughs> 
Because anyone, Chaz, who will put up with you doing all this and still marry you, uh uh-uh. Absolutely not. Because I would understand it if Chaz told us now he met a woman, a brand new woman, and in six months they fell in love and he proposed. I could believe that story. Because you know what? Hey, that could be my story. My husband met me and then within six months he was proposing to me and I hear it all the time. So I don't think there's anything impossible about a man meeting a woman and in six months proposing. But Chaz told us this reunion was taped just three months after um, the actual show. And this was a woman from his from before. That's the part that I don't I, I can't jive with. I can't jive with that. So I don't know if this is if this if this is another uh, poem that I don't get. <laughs> Maybe it's a poem. Maybe it's another version of Chaz's poetry in his poetic manner. But I'm lost. I'm lost in the poetry, and I'm lost in the poem. Um, and and he went on and told Vanessa that um, she's a narcissist. <laughs> Now, he knows Vanessa a lot more intricately than I do. And um, I'm not going to so far go as far as calling her a narcissist because I don't have enough information on um, Vanessa to say that she's a narcissist. But I do know she's manipulative (laughs) because she tried to manipulate me with that message she sent down to me uh, months ago about about my video on her child. I already know she's manipulative. And I do know that Vanessa is um, selfish because she's kind of told us that in a lot of ways. Vanessa's number one concern is herself. Chaz picked up on that when he said, Vanessa said, I will not like your dog um, or any dog. I would never like your dog nor come to love your dog. (laughs) And then we heard what Vanessa said. Then we heard what Vanessa said to Chaz when he was in there, when he left on that retreat. (laughs) And when he left on that retreat and Vanessa sent him that note and said, it was, if you was going to leave, you should have let us know because then we could have kicked you off and we could have kept William. (laughs) Woo, that Vanessa, that doggone Vanessa. I tell you, Vanessa's always going to look at a situation and what's best for her. What's best for her. And if it ain't best for you, who cares? Who cares? She definitely going to look out for herself first. And in that moment right there, there's another, there is another thing about intent versus impact. Now, Vanessa explained us her intent. Her intent was to say that, hey, um, you know what? William really didn't want to go home and you did want to go home, Chaz. So if you would have told us before you wanted to go home, then we could have spared William. That might have been her intent, but boy, oh boy, her impact was horrible. Her impact, and that's that's what happens sometimes when you don't line up your intent and your impact. When you don't line up the two, when you don't line up your intent with your impact, that's what happens. You get this combustion. That's what happens with Alonzo. And it happens with um, it happens with Vanessa a lot of the times too, y'all. And then she doesn't come back and correct her impact. We hear, we hear, we hear. We had heard it on Alonzo's video that Vanessa and Dominique were still dating as of this video being, as of this reunion being taped, which is in October. It explains a lot. It explains how um, Dominique came so hard at me in my comments whenever I said anything about Vanessa. He came hard. He came hard. He called me grandma, but he wasn't treating me like no grandma he loves. (laughs) He was treating me like a grandma who doesn't like the girl he brought home. That's what he was treating me like. I was wondering where it was coming from. I was wondering where it was coming from. But now that I know that Vanessa was his little, they had a little secret thing going on before they could reveal the secret. Now I get it. Now I get it because he was protecting his girl. I get it. I get it, Dominique. Now you was looking out for your girl. You was dropping down in the comments, sending me long customer service letters talking about you doing my girl wrong. You represent her wrong. I get it now. I really do get it. You told grandma, this is the girl I want. I brought home, but, um, 
Like I said, there's a, there's reasons, there's seasons, and there's lifetimes to relationships. And I'm going to go back to um, what I talked about with Meek and Justin and say, what do we think about Vanessa and Dom? Dom? Is it a reason, a season, or a lifetime? And I'm going to tell you right now that it's definitely not no lifetime. Tell you that right now. We can knock that off. Um, be honest with you, I don't even know if it's going to last a season, <laughs> maybe half a season. Um, but what I'm going to knock it off as is a reason. There's a reason to it. And the reason goes back to all the videos I did earlier on Dominique and Vanessa. Goes back to what I went back to where a little bit of personality. And um, Dominique can get mad at me all he wants to. But one thing I know about the way he looks at Vanessa is he has... He looks at Vanessa as the girl he couldn't date when he was younger. Let's just be real. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dominique, if I make you mad again. Vanessa is the girl um, that was in the suburbs that lived on the other side of the tracks. And Dominique was over living in the ghetto side. And he wished he could go with a girl from the high school that maybe Vanessa went to. And um, he couldn't. Vanessa's parents probably wouldn't even allow it. Society wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't allow the mixing of these two classes of people. And now here's um, Dominique's chance to date, go back in time. A lot of people go back in time. A lot of people go back and try to date what they did in high school. I talked about it. I talked about it with Alonzo reliving high school dreams. A lot of people go back and think about their first love in high school and they want to go back and try to you know, date someone like that now. But Vanessa is only a figment of that because Vanessa is now older. Vanessa's got two kids. I believe she has two different baby daddies too. And Vanessa is really not anything that Dom wants in a, in a lifetime. Uh, Dom told us, unless Dom's been lying to us, he's told us he wants two to 10 kids. And I'm going to tell you right now that Vanessa is not going to try to have a third baby daddy. It's the same thing I'm talking about with Mika. Women who already have two kids with two baby daddies, which now we know is the case of Mika and also um, Vanessa. Do these women really want a third father and a third baby daddy? Do they really want to be that woman out in the world? Do they really want to be the woman with three kids by three baby daddies and take the chance that that third relationship doesn't work? And now they are left once again raising children even though they may be co-parenting a lot of the work falls on the mother especially if you have custody of the children primarily a lot of the work falls on the mother do they really want that for their life and I'm going to say Vanessa doesn't want it I don't think so I don't think Vanessa and at best it will be one child and does will Dom settle for one child he said he wanted two to ten one wasn't even within range two to ten so do I believe that Vanessa and Dom have long range I don't think so I think this is also Vanessa um, part of her saving face because I think that this season even though she rejected uh, Chaz in the end she was rejected all season let's be honest about it she rejected Chaz in the 11th hour but the truth of the matter is Chaz rejected her all season long and so it really is a nice little story to come here and say yeah I was rejected by Chaz but in the end I ended up with a man that's Dom. That's good. So she has a reason that she's dating um, Dom and Dom has a reason uh, she's da he's dating Vanessa. He's living out some sort of fantasy he's got. And then I say the other reason why I believe Dom is dating Vanessa comes from what Alonzo told us in his video that they've already been to Nashville. And I said, really? On the buddy pass? <laughs> On the buddy pass from... Um, on the buddy pass from Vanessa's uh, perks from her job of being a, a flight attendant. <laughs> and we all know Dom loves to travel. And I said, oh, there it is. Dom loves to travel. Dom says he's in Mexico at least once a week. He loves to travel all around the world. Let me tell you, a person who loves to travel, their perfect mate is a flight attendant with a buddy pass. With a buddy pass where that woman can fly wherever he wants to go. He can get a buddy pass. Like I said, a reason. A reason. There is a reason why it may work right now. But is it a reason? Is it a season? Or is it a lifetime? And like I said, I believe it is a reason and a season. 
and they probably gonna take a few trips together <laughs> they're probably gonna take a few trips together um use all them buddy passes that Vanessa has saved up and now she has someone to travel with a man that she can travel with and go to some nice places maybe have a good time and then once Dom is ready to get back on his real track of finding a wife and having a family and doing what he really wants to do in life uh, then they will they will end their relationship amicably <laughs> it won't be no drama because I don't think that that's how it's going to end. It won't be any drama. It won't be any fussing and fighting. And as Dom says, he doesn't cheat on women. So Vanessa's going to be just fine. Dom says he doesn't cheat on women. What Dom says is once he decides he's ready to cheat or he's ready to move on, he just breaks up with the woman. <laughs> so when he says we have a tremendous bond, me and Vanessa, we have a tremendous bond. I believe it. You have a bond now with them buddy passes and you have a bond now over your love for travel you have a bond now over a few things, but can that bond last a lifetime? I don't believe so. But like I said, they in their happy zone. Be happy. Be happy. What's that song? Be happy. And you know who else was trying to fake like they was happy? Will. Will the millionaire. Will the mill. People still don't believe Will got money. I don't know why. I don't know why it's so hard to believe that Will has a net worth of a million dollars if he's in real estate y'all it don't take much to get a net worth of a million dollars when you're in the real estate game and you're counting your equity in those homes as part of your net worth which you're supposed to do i don't understand in fact the more people don't believe will that he has a net worth of a million dollars the more i actually look at those people and i say to them that they don't know money so people think by telling Will he doesn't have a net worth of a million dollars, they think they're putting Will down. But honestly, it says more about that person who can't figure out how you get to a million dollars if you own three homes. It really is, tells me, it's the same thing I said about Mika when Mika was calling someone a baby daddy. That tells me about you. It's the same thing I said about Patrice when Patrice didn't know what the word stage was, when Patrice didn't know what the word when she said she assumed he was sleeping on a pallet, that told me more about Patrice, okay? That told me more about Patrice than it told me about Will. I believe Will. Even before Will showed his Rolls Royce on Kojo's channel, even before all of that, because I'm in real estate and I understand that getting to a network of a million dollars, if you have three or four homes, is not going to be hard to get there. It's not going to be hard to get there at all. So I don't think people understand money. I don't think people understand real estate. I don't think people understand leverage. I don't think people understand any of this. And I keep telling people. And another thing they said about Will is how can you be a millionaire and you don't even own your own home? Another sign of people not knowing money. Uh, somebody dropped down in my comments a um, couple of months ago, and I'm going to share it, telling me that you have an old mind thinking and that young people, um, every night, young people, they don't want to own a home and, and something about that's not everyone's goal. And I had to politely, I don't know if it was a, me, a male or a female, politely correct them and say, once again, here is another person coming for someone when they are revealing their own ignorance. First of all, I never said that real estate has to be in the form of you owning your own home. And the reason why I know I never said it is because it's not even the way I did it. And it's not the way Will's doing it. And honestly, the way Will is doing it and the way I did it is actually the smarter way. When you are buying multiple homes, when you are buying, you're running multiple projects at one time and you have a portfolio of real estate, the last thing you necessarily want in your books is a home you own that you live in. It's actually not the good thing to do. Because what happens is when you're applying for loans for all these other properties you want to you wanna build in the case of Will or you want to flip or you want to rehab, no matter what game you're in, when they're qualifying you for these homes, they're going to look at what are your bills, what's your debt to income ratio. And what they're going to look at is if you own a home, they're going to say, well, you got to pay that mortgage over there every single month. So since you've got to pay that mortgage over there every single month, I don't know if I can give you a loan for all these other homes because you got so much debt over here. But here's the trick. When you're a renter, 
when you're a renter over here, they say, oh, you're a renter. That means at any point in time, you could leave that home, that apartment that I'm not going to consider your real debt. Rent is not debt because I don't owe it to my landlord until the month is due. You see, that's not a debt. I don't pre-count rent as a debt when I'm qualifying. So now what happens is because I'm renting, it's not a debt. Now when I'm buying over here, they will say to me, hey, okay, you don't have any debt. So now I can give you a loan for this house over here. And that's what allows me to accumulate real estate. So when I hear someone drop down in my comments and talk about I'm old and I don't have no, and all my methods are old. No, they're not. No, they're not. And what you revealed to me is you revealed to me your ignorance. That's what I'm telling people, young people, young people, young people. Stop calling old people old as if they have nothing to contribute to your life. You should listen. And once you listen, if you don't agree or you don't understand or you don't want to do it, that's fine. But to discount knowledge puts you at a disadvantage. I actually don't recommend to young people that they buy a home. I don't first. I recommend that young people buy a, a, a rental property first. Buy a duplex, live in one unit, rent the other one out. Buy a fourplex, live in one unit, rent the other ones out. Then what you do is you use the equity from that. You even use the cash flow coming in from those apartments. And then later on, you use that to qualify for the home that you want. That's actually what I recommend. But this wasn't supposed to be no real estate exam. But anyway, what it's about is about I was never the one that didn't believe uh, Will's story that he was a millionaire. I believed it. I believed that his equity came from real estate. And I believe that he is new money. He's coming into it, which is fine, too. And I believe over the years, he will refine his methods. People are like, well, people who make money don't wear gold chains or fake chains. Yes, they do. I live in LA. Lots of people who make money wear fake gold chains. And lots of people wear fake, uh, fake Chanel bags, fake Louis Vuittons, whatever. Still doesn't mean that they don't have money. Lots of people do it. Another misnomer. Now, we may not agree with the flashiness of Will. We may believe that Will is too much pomp and circumstance. That's fine. But I'm not going to not believe that he has a million dollars net worth. I'm not going to not believe that. I believe it. But I also believe that he has a lot of ego and sometimes that gets in his way in conversations, just like on this episode two. He got on here when they were going around talking about what are you doing now? Will decide to tell us he's got two women. Why, Will? Why do you need to let your ego get so out of control that you need to come on here and talk about you got two women? Why do you? Because it's ego. Hey, I might have get got kicked off. None of these women may like me, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I got two women right now. We didn't need to know that. You didn't need to tell us that except to make yourself look good. Ego, ego, ego. And that's what I'm saying that in the end, Will needs to be careful because if he doesn't get control of that ego, if he doesn't get control of it, it's gonna get him in trouble later on because the more money he makes, the more he's gonna become a mark. The more money he makes, the more he's going to become a mark. And you got to have a level head. Once you start making a lot of money, you really need a level and sober minded head. Okay. And you can't be driven by ego. Once you become driven by ego, your decision making is going to become suspect. It's, it's going to become flimsy. It's not going to become sound because your ego is going to be driving a lot of your decision making. So I know that Will has accumulated some wealth. He's got a good business. He's doing a lot of good things. He's building homes and community. He's doing a lot of good things out here. But his ego, he needs to learn how to control that ego because if he doesn't control the ego, it's going to take all of this other stuff he's built. It's going to make it come, come crashing down. So that is my warning to Will. Um, but I was never one of the ones that said he wasn't a millionaire. I don't know why. That's other people who don't understand real estate. That ain't me. That is not me. But last but not least, we get to this whole conspiracy versus truth and lies. And I'm going to say this. Do I believe it was a conspiracy? No, I do not believe it was conspiracy. I believe once again, Will's ego got in the way. And what I believe happened was, um, well, let me say this. Do I believe it was a conspiracy by Will and um, Alexis? No, I believe the conspiracy was with Laron. I believe he's the, the person who, who actually set up the plan. I think he was the one that set up the group chat. I believe Laron is the one that's messy. 
What I believe happened to Will when I talk about that ego, this is what happened to him. His ego got him in trouble. Because when they were in that male group chat and they were talking about things like who they wanted to vote off, just because Will says, I want to vote Kashia off because she doesn't like me or, or whatever, I don't call that a conspiracy. I call that him reacting to what he knows about Kashia, and I don't think anything's wrong with it. I don't think anything's wrong with Will saying, hey, I want to vote Kashia off. The reason I don't believe it's a conspiracy because Will doesn't have, he wouldn't have had the authority all by himself to vote off Kashia. There had to be lots of other people who voted off Kashia. And not only would there have to be lots of other people voting off Kashia, even the producers would have had to go along with it because in the end, we know that they even get the final say. The men get to put up two women. The men get to put up two women to vote and to eliminate. But in the end, it's the producers who choose between those last two women. And in the end, when it was Koshia and it was and it was Mika, the producers told, chose Koshia. So it, I don't think it's a conspiracy because to be a conspiracy, Will would have also had to be cons been conspiring with the producers. And I don't believe that. What I believe it is a case of is that the group chat was set up by Messi Laron. And what I believe happened was Messi Laron was going to use the male group chat to do his messiness. I do believe that. I believe Messi Laron set up the male group chat to do his own intel. He wanted to know what everyone else was thinking. You see, Tommy said we shouldn't have been having discussions outside of the lounge. But who was the one who first broke the rules and said, I'm going to set up this group chat anyway? It was Laron. And who was the one when we've seen these text messages that introduced the conversation about who to vote off? It was Laron. So what Laron did was he laid the, he laid the groundwork. He was the one that broke the rules and set up the group chat. He was the one that started introducing the conversation in the group chat of who we want to vote off. That's how he drew William into the conversation. That's how he drew Will into the conversation. That's how he drew Dom in the, in, into the conversation. Laurent set it up and he drew everybody in. You see, he drew everybody in. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to pick the brains of all the men on what the men were thinking. Okay. So here is what I tell you that William, not William, Will's ego is what really messed it all up because Will was friends and tight with Alexis. Now, remember, Alexis is being charged from the ladies of going and telling Will, okay, what the lady said. Okay, listen here. Alexis told Will what the lady said. This is why Koshia was mad because what Koshia said was, I was upset about what Lexis told, uh, Alexis, Lexi as they call her, told Will and what, I, what Lexi said was not true. Well, if it wasn't true, Koshia, then I'm wondering why we haven't ever heard what the truth was. Koshia constantly said that Lexi lied on her said something to Will that wasn't true. But one thing we've never heard is what part of what Lexi said was not true, Koshia. Koshia's never revealed that. She's never revealed that. If you, unless some, if someone can correct me, what has Koshia ever corrected Lexi or Lexi's of? So Koshia now sits here because Lexi is not here to defend herself and say everything that Lexis told Will was not true. And what Alexis did was she soured Will on me telling Will lies. Well, what was the lie? We never heard what the lie was. So there could be a good chance that what Alexis told Will was not a lie. It was a truth. Now, maybe it may not have been the um, intent of Koshia. See, once, we, once again, we're getting into intent and impact. Koshia could say, I might have said those things, but that was not my intent. It could, it could not be, but that became the impact. You see, we're, we're here once again to it. So then, because she has never told us what the truth was. And then on the flip side, we now hear about this story about Kashia and Chaz going out or Kashia being at Chaz's house, right? And we also know that it was a bone of contention with Vanessa. If you go back to what Chaz said about Vanessa, was Van Chaz was very, said Vanessa was very upset about Kashia hanging around Chaz too much, hanging around at his house 
not leaving. So when Laurent spills the beans and says, Koshia um, was dating Chaz and Chaz said, me and Koshia never dated. I believe they did. Now dating and date, there you go. Once again, this, this is the splicing of these words. Dating and dates. People can do a whole lot of thing on a date and that may not mean that they're dating. But we know that there was something going on with Koshia and Chaz, no matter how slight or no matter how big, because even Chaz mentioned Vanessa noticed it and Vanessa didn't like it. And Vanessa wanted Koshia to go home. So we know something went on. So this movement of Koshia, even before she was eliminated, she was doing a whole lot even before she got eliminated. But let me go back to what I'm saying about how the messy Laron was the one who set up. He laid the groundwork. But where, where Will's um, ego was the match that actually went off, it was his ego. Because when they were in the men's chat talking about who they wanted to vote off, that's not a conspiracy. That's these men talking about, I want to vote off so-and-so and so. That's not a conspiracy. Um, he lied and said that he never said those words and he, and he got caught because they pulled up them text messages. They pulled up them receipts. So he definitely lied and tried to say he didn't say it. And he said it where he went wrong, where Will really, really went wrong was when he let his ego take over his mouth. And what he started talking about was, yeah, because I got to connect a connect like he doing a drug deal. I got to connect. So what he did was he outed Lexi in his boldness, in his ego to talk so boldly about how he's got to connect. Just like he said, I got two women I'm dating. He outed Lexi. That's why I know when Alexis was going off on that stage, one thing I said was that Alexis didn't feel protected. Even when Will came over and tried to calm her down, she didn't even want the comfort of Will. And what we notice is Will and Alexis never talked you, we look at all of these relationships that continued to have interaction after the people were kicked off or doing the show. One thing is we talked about this whole season. There wasn't a lot of love, but in the end, there's still a whole lot of people dating. You have Laron and Maya still dating. Now you got Patrice and William still dating. You got Mika and Justin still dating. You got Vanessa and Dom still dating. So in the end, we could say this, this whole season was a bust because of love, but you really can't even say that because they at least got one love connection and that's Mika and Justin. And a lot of seasons didn't even have that. Plus when you layer on the fact that you have all these people still dating in a lot of ways is the season a bust. Is it a bust? It may not have gotten to where we wanted to get to the way we wanted to happen. But in the end, you got a lot of people still going out with each other. And in the past seasons, you didn't always have this, but what happened with Lexi and Will, which is why I think Alexis and Lexi in the end said she didn't want to have nothing to do with Will. They didn't even date afterwards. They were supposedly had this connection on the show, but they didn't date afterwards. I believe one of the reasons is because Alexis knew that it was Will who threw her under the bus. And the way he threw her under the bus was because his ego couldn't keep the secret. His ego had to boast about how he had a connection and that connect was telling him information from the girls group. Because when Alexis told Will what Koshia was saying about um, him, she did not say, tell Will with the intentions that he would then go back to the guys and start telling the guys because then that will reveal that, that Alexis even told Will. So here you had Alexis helping out her man standing up her man but the way that man used that information was he used his ego his ego got the best of him and he went back to the men's group and he boasted to the men's group that i gotta connect but what he didn't know that was in the men's group was snake laron and then what laron did was i got you i got the piece of information i need about you now to now take you down that's the real conspiracy is Laron and Will walked into the trap and he walked into the trap because of his ego. His ego made him boast to the man that he had a connect and people figured out who was connect more, which was Lexi. And once they figured that out, 
Laurent went back and told the women, you got a mole in the group. You got a mole in the group. And that mole, they easily figured out it was Lexi and it went down the hill from there. It went downhill from there. So when I talk about Will's ego and how it can be dangerous and how it's going to get him in trouble, here's a perfect example of how it happened. And now I understand why Lexi really doesn't want to have no dealings with um, Will after the show. I don't understand why it dissipated, why it went away. We even started seeing it wane even on the show because once Alexis realized that Will threw her under the bus by telling the secret, Alexis didn't want to have nothing to do with him. And listen, I may not have gotten through the whole interview with Lexi and Alexis on the Kojo interview. Like I said, I'm only in hour one, but I know enough about Alexis in hour one to know that when she figured out that Will told the secret and told the guys on her and now she's in hot water Alexis is going to be done with Will she going to be done with him she's going to be done with him she kept it cute and classy with him on the show but she wasn't interested in Will no more once she saw what once she saw Will's ego was bigger than the care Will had for her she was out she was out but I'm going to do a, a recap review on the Alexis interview y'all come back please come back um, tomorrow and we will talk about that so talk to y'all later bye